So a couple of months ago, I finally decided to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube, and surprisingly, it wasn't as complicated as I thought. I can solve one in a little under 3 minutes, but considering that speed cubers can solve cubes in under 10 seconds, 3 minutes seems exceedingly long. I'm definitely going to have to step up my game, and while practice does make perfect, spending years improving my cubing skills doesn't seem that appealing. So my next specs option is to build a machine to solve Rubik's Cubes for me. Let's build a Rubik's Cube solver. Alright, so this project has three main objectives. First, if we want this thing to go fast, I'll need to design a machine that can turn a Rubik's Cube on all six sides. Second, I'll need to program an algorithm so that the machine can solve any Rubik's Cube scramble. And finally, there needs to be a way to communicate to the machine the cube's initial configuration. And with that, let's begin. So how are we going to turn the cube? Stepper motors seem like the way to go, so I went ahead and ordered 6 of these Nemo 17 stepper motors from Big Jeff. They have a pretty decent torque rating, so they should be more than capable of turning the sides of the cube. To drive the steppers, I'll be using 6 of these TMC2208 stepper motor drivers. Surprisingly, these are the same drivers used in my 3D printer silent motherboard. After taking some measurements, I started on the design. I'm going for a really minimalistic design here. I want the machine to be as small as possible with very simple parts. After that, it's time for printing. I'm going to start off by assembling the base of the machine. This centerpiece will connect all of the motor mounts together, and I kind of predicted that the frame would be pretty flexible, so I designed these support structures to connect each of the motor mounts together. After hammering on the 3D printed motor sleeves, I mounted each stepper motor onto its respective place on the frame. The top stepper fits onto this removable hat piece which has neodymium magnets which will allow for easier removal of the cube. Okay, so in order to turn the cube with the stepper motors, I'll need some sort of adapter piece. A U-shaped piece like this could work, but having it on all sides of the cube would probably cause jamming. A better idea would be to have something that attaches to the center of the cube. So I popped off one of the center pieces and designed an adapter with the same profile. Since the adapters will attach to the center, all sides of the cube should be able to be turned independently without interference. Now onto the bread and butter of the project, the algorithm. There are actually 43 quintillion ways in which a Rubik's Cube can be scrambled, which means that the computer will need to be able to solve any of them. But in order to solve the cube, the computer is going to need to work with its own digital representation of the cube, aka the virtual cube. The virtual cube is going to be represented by a 6x9 matrix since every cube has 6 sides and each side has 9 tiles. This makes 54 entries in the matrix or 54 tiles on every cube. A fully solved virtual cube matrix looks like this. Each row in the matrix represents a different face of the cube, each column in the matrix represents a different position on a given face, and each entry in the matrix is a character that represents the color of that specific tile. The virtual cube matrix can represent any changes to the cube. For example, if I turn the red side of the cube, the turn is reflected in this updated matrix where the highlighted entries are the tiles that change. This way, the computer will be able to use the algorithm to analyze the cube and make decisions without continuously scanning the cube with a camera or sensor. Once I sorted out the virtual cube, I started programming the algorithm on the Arduino Uno. The solver is going to use the beginner's method to solve the cube since that's the only method I know. The process definitely took some time, I programmed a bit, played some Tetris, then programmed some more, then played more Tetris, then programmed, and beat my high score in Tetris, and then programmed some more. Somewhere along the line, the program got too big for the Arduino to handle, so I put the Arduino to the side and switched to the Teensy 4.1. This microcontroller is superior to the Arduino in every way. I'm talking 38 times the clock speed, much more pins, and much more storage. Honestly, I don't even know why it's called the Teensy, because it looks pretty average. After two weeks of programming, I finally finished the algorithm and things were working. But after some research, I realized that the beginner's method wasn't an efficient way to solve a Rubik's Cube. Speed cubers take less than 60 moves to solve a Rubik's Cube, and the beginner's method uses upwards of 100. In hindsight, I should have probably known that a method meant for beginners wasn't going to be the best. So doing more research, I discovered the CFOP method that is used by speed cubers and only has 4 steps with an average of about 60 moves. The main thing that sets this method apart is that you simultaneously build the first two layers, whereas in the beginner's method, you individually build the first two layers. I spent some time learning CFOP and then started on a second algorithm. 
One of the main challenges in making a Rubik's Cube solving algorithm is the vast number of possibilities. Because there are so many ways to complete each step, a decision made in one step determines how long the other steps take. With CFOP, just four steps leaves you with an endless amount of ways to go about solving the cube. So rather than go through all of the possibilities, I made it so that the algorithm picks just a few select cases to test. Alright, so I finally finished the CFOP algorithm, and this time I'm getting much lower move counts. So let's move on. I'm powering everything with 24 volts from my bench power supply. The motors get powered directly, while this 5 volt regulator powers the TNC and the logic boards on the drivers. I soldered up some boards for the drivers, hooked up the TNC, and 3D printed a plate to connect everything together. Now that the algorithm works, we'll need a way to tell the computer what the cube looks like. My initial thoughts were to use camera vision, but the camera that I have isn't very accurate, not to mention the challenge of scanning all six sides of the cube with a single camera. Instead, I decided to create an HTML web server that allows the user to manually configure the cube. The Teensy 4.1 has Ethernet support, and with this Ethernet kit, I can plug the Teensy into my mini router and access the web server from any device connected to my internet. Okay, so now that everything is pretty much done, let's test it. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to work on the first try. I ran some more tests, tried adding some time delays between each move, and wasn't able to get a successful solve. I came to the conclusion that the failure was probably due to the friction of the cube itself, because from what I'm told, the generic Rubik's cubes are pretty bad if you're trying to go full turbo. To test my hypothesis, I bought this other cube that has screws for what I assume is meant for tensioning. This way, I'm able to loosen it up a bit. It's not exactly a speed cube, but it was cheap and I think it might just work. Just comparing the flexibility of these two cubes, I already see major differences. Before trying out this cube, I did have to change the profile of the adapter design, but once that was done, I tested it, and it worked. Well, it works sometimes. It definitely had its fair share of jamming, so I tried increasing the current limits of the drivers to see if it was a torque issue, but ended up breaking my teensy and one of my drivers, because apparently current limits are a thing. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. So I got a new teensy and a driver and then reassembled the electronics. After that, I decided to experiment with the tolerances on the adapter and motor sleeve designs to minimize the friction on the cube. Many, many tests later, I got a design that had a pretty good fit Something that I also noticed was that the adapter piece could flex out of the motor sleeve, so I made these retainer clips to keep it in place. And finally, after lots of tests, I eventually got somewhat consistent results. And of course, this project wouldn't be complete without a sick emblem. The fastest solve I've been able to get is about 4.56 seconds in 50 moves. By comparison, the current world record for a human to solve a Rubik's Cube is 3.47 seconds, set by Yu Sheng Du in 2018 while the world record for a machine is an astounding 0.38 seconds. This machine was made by MIT students Ben Kotz and Jared DiCarlo. Ironically, both of these guys also worked on the MIT Mini Cheetah, a project that I similarly attempted in the past. They're both kind of like me, except much smarter, and you know, they actually got accepted to MIT. But that's alright, I'm over it. I definitely plan on revisiting this project in the future, because I know there's lots of room for improvement, especially with the algorithm. Something that I found out when doing research was God's number, the fact that any Rubik's Cube can be solved in 20 moves or less. With a smarter algorithm that can review numerous amounts of possibilities, I definitely think that I can get my fastest solve time down. Until then, I think it's safe to say that while it's not the fastest cube solver, it's definitely faster than a lot of speed cubers, and I'll take that as a win. I've documented everything there is to know about this project, including step-by-step -step instructions on how to build your own Rubik's Cube solver, so check out the links in the description if you're interested. Hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.